The final shape is officially a success. A lot of people, including myself, thought that this is not going to work out, but it seems it has. Now the question is, is Bungie going to make enough money with the final shape to actually not be taken over by Sony? Still to be, be determined at this point, I think. But the final shape, despite having a couple of minor flaws, is a success. Alright, from Paul Tassi here, Destiny 2 offers reassurances about episodic model frontier hints all right so mr paul in these first few weeks there's been a good amount of skepticism about this to switching to an act based episodic model replacing seasons there are three instead of four well there should be skepticism about this because you need to understand they would never replace their existing system with an act based system if it was less money Every ma major change any games, Destiny 2, Diablo, World of Warcraft, Fortnite, or whatever, pick one. Anytime they make a switch like this, it's because they believe the, uh, the new version is going to make them more money. And while the final shape was a success, keep in mind, Bungie is still nickel and diming their players a lot. So expect, expect more things that you need to pay for with real life money. It's going to be great. Or in a year, though presently they feel quite a lot like seasons, but with more added time gate roadblocks thrown in as they're split up into acts. Now Destiny 2 assistant game director Robbie Stevens has spoken to Games Radar in an interesting interview that looked to offer some reassurances about what's coming and what the plan is from here. Read the whole thing here, but some highlights and takeaways include Act 3 of Episode 1 will produce one of the biggest exotic missions Destiny has ever done. And Steven said this would not have been a possibility without the new episodic format. This would be not that long after one of the best exotic missions Destiny has done, Dual Destiny. That is true. Mm. So, Act 3 of Episode 1 will produce one of the biggest exotic missions of Destiny. What does that mean? What is I have no idea, but again, they still need to make more money. Before the final shape released, even if the information we had was only 50% accurate, which means, honestly, if your information is even 20% off, you could consider it easily random, just garbage noises. But in this case, even if the, if the estimates for Destiny, the numbers that we had, we knew before the final shape released, were even... 50% long, and I cannot stress how, how 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 huge that is. We're right. I think Bungie is still struggling with the amount of money they need to make. So expect things to happen, boys. Big me. Would it be possible Bungie introduces a six-man exotic mission? So it'd be almost like a like a mini raid. It could either be that, or they could keep it in a three-man format and essentially make it a dungeon, or or like. Could happen, who knows? A dungeon, like a light dungeon. I'm down. Also, this does not necessarily actually mean that it's gonna be, oh, the size of the dungeon raid or whatever you want to call it, the mission is gonna be bigger. No, no, no. I think this is actually hinting towards that the exotics are gonna be super sploosh and whatnot. Because one of the biggest things that people complained about when the final shape came out was two things. One, the predictably shitty Tano storyline. And, well, the exotics were reskins of previous things that you had. So, there is a chance that this is going to be the biggest exotic thing because there's going to be completely new stuff, okay? Stuff that's going to blow people away. Admittedly, that is the best case scenario in my opinion. It could happen because, again, they did delay the final shape because it is literally Bungie's last chance. Maybe, maybe there is some news. Is Bungie safe or not safe? I would, I would be surprised if there was at this moment because it shouldn't be that, uh, that, uh, that knowable at this point. But you know, let's see. Or like a dungeon, like a light dungeon. I'm down. Now, Act Two of Episode One will bring a new set of activities, implying something will join Breach, Executable, and Enigma Protocol. Dude, this was the big question that I had. Would the, these activities be expanding in any kind of way, rather than just being new maps for them? This stands to reason, given that both are a single map, Breach has three boss rooms, which is significantly less than what we usually see from seasonal activities, so adding more full activities seems like a good call. I would not expect, however, the more activity thing to continue through Act 3, given that by that point, it would be getting pretty late in the season. I wonder also, is Bungie doing an actually really smart thing? 
one of the really smart things not a lot of companies are doing is they introduce the new stuff. The new stuff is good, but it's, uh, you know, it, it, it a little bit of the end is missing, you know? It's three bosses, but you expect five. It's five weapons, but there should be, on average, you know, nine or something like that. You know, you introduce that. People play it. People farm it. It's all good. It's all good. It's all cool. It's uh, all good in the hood. And then, and then the con the next content drop is more new stuff. But the old stuff gets that, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth boss instead of uh, added, added to them. The, the new weapons, more weapons double them. Stuff like this, people love it. I love it. You probably love it. That That is really smart when companies do it. For a whole new activity to farm. Yeah, I, I think narratively, though, it has to change, right? Considering how Act 1 ended, right? So that's good. That's good. Now, there are some interesting lines about expanding and changing Nessus through time, though this has confused some players, as in some missions, we see transformed versions of old spaces and Nessus, but in the larger patrol space, nothing has actually changed. Will that happen in the future? Will we see new permanent areas accessible in Nessus if it is truly expanding? So what he's talking about is, if you go and you load into the activities, even now, you get a different Nessus than what you would get if you load into the normal patrol zones of Nessus. You know, I think for a, for the game to feel like this live, seamless organism, it needs to change in both areas. I would like it to see it change. Like if at any point we, we enter a stage where Nessus is, you know, having all these ev evolutions and that is present in the activity, it's confusing to go back to a patrol zone on Nessus and it'd be completely fine. I would like to see both of those areas change. This game is the same season of model with a new name. Nothing ever changes. Look, man, I know y'all want me to come out here and bust Bundy's balls. Uh hey, it doesn't honestly need to change as long as it's good. That's that's a thing. It doesn't need to change if it's good, if it's good. Uh, but I went into this thinking that the, the episode that will coincide with the drop of the annual expansion would probably be a weaker one. I'm hoping that's going to be, be just an act one of this episode. And act two is going to pick things up and act three is going to continue to ramp things up for the rest of the year. So hmm. that's just that's just my my assessment. I'm also still living in the Goldilocks zone. I'm still I'm still living in that honeymoon f f period. I'm still blown away that Final Shape was as good as it was. I've been in ha I've been a happy Destiny player, and this may be the first <laughs> time since maybe Forsaken that I've been like genuinely happy with Destiny. I, mm. I'm just saying I'm still I'm still living in it right now. I'm sure I'm about to get you know probably give me give me let me spend two weeks inside of Iron Banner. I will I will be back to my old ways. Give me give me. Let me get in back-to-back -back Iron Banana matches for two weeks straight, and we'll be back. And there's a general sense from Stevens that the current slate of episodes are meant to tie up loose ends for the storylines that we're not able to address in the final shape itself. I previously said that last year's seasons were mainly about setting up three episodes rather than the final Okay, time to say something bad about this thing. The story is just so confusing, and... Well, it's not really confusing. The story is just kind of like... Eh... The whole story of this thing, in my opinion, is really kind of like a little bit, a lot, a lot of eh. Okay, there's the Traveler, there's, there's, there's Dodgers, there's the Light, there's, there's all of this stuff, there's aliens, and a few alien, there's random MacGuffin things, and I don't like the story of this thing, I'm not gonna lie, I really don't. It's, it's just not entertaining in the slightest, and... The, the final shape, the reveal that, oh, this, this, this the light path and good side, and essentially we're kind of just fighting to see if we're going to be, you know, uh, the, the final shape, because blah, 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 blah. I don't like it. I, I, I don't like it. I, I think Destiny's story is incredibly weak uh, overall as something that you can consume. I honestly don't like it. I am not a fan of Destiny's storytelling final shape itself and this makes more sense when you allow for the idea that lightfall in the ensuing year may not have been originally planned at all in that case it feels like major plot lines that are being addressed and or resolved are maya sunderesh and her apparent control of the vex and exos and we're seeing a little bit of that especially with saint crow facing his past in a different way by hunting down the seemingly immortal fickle with the help of the fallen and likely Savathun and Zevo Wrath facing all at last shaking up the high pantheon as they say 
perhaps ending that sisterly conflict once and for all. By the way, if, if none of these stories interest you, I will say this. Just don't play the episode. If you're looking at this and you're like, dude, I don't. Ah, oh, that's not a good, that's not a good th thing to say, Cross. Because if you're a Destiny 2 player, you can't ignore the storyline. That's that that's exactly the thing. At some point, you're gonna be like, "Well, I'm bored. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I guess I'll just go and you know play the story a little bit." And there you go. And you you can't ignore it. You, you literally cannot ignore it. Don't give a damn about Crow or Maya Sundarish, but I love Savathic. Then just jump in in that final episode. You can always just jump into that final episode. Uh, that's the beautiful thing about the episodes is that you could jump in and jump out. And, it, and if one of what, whichever one of these narrative points really piques your interest, that's the one you can roll with. Now, Doug Stevens also says these endings will set up new futures for the races in question, leading to the infamous Cryptic Gear 11 Destiny 2 Frontiers, which he also addresses. Ooh, we want to get back to expanding our worlds and world building, expanding the universe of Destiny in general. And I think that's as much as I should probably say about it. Dude, guys, I think this... All you know what's the first part about the light, uh, the final shape? It's the fact that the Witness is not actually a badly made villain to a degree. It's just the fact that it's very clear if you pay attention to what's happening in this new lore that the Witness was never the thing that was designed from the start. It, it was... It, all, it only appeared as a thing that's really gonna happen, you know... Uh, recently, relatively recently, probably it has been in the works for a couple of years now, the storyline and how it's gonna go and how it's gonna end, but it is very painfully clear that the witness was not intended to be from the start of Destiny, that, that it's a new thing, and they did fit it as well as possible, honestly, I think, but the fact that it kind of fits in in all of the past things, past encounters and whatnot that they are working for, the witness and things like that, it's kind of lame, it's kind of dull, and it honestly spits on your intelligence as a player, as someone who consumes the story. Because there is no fucking way that no one would have mentioned the witness or that they have a boss or whatever when you're actually uh, going through uh, all, any of these stories. It feels a lot shoon hoard in, effectively. But, now well, the good part is that the witness is not really that bad as a character on its own. So I guess that's a bonus, but still. August is probably going to be... It may be the biggest stream Bungie ever does because Bungie's going to be showing us what Destiny Frontiers is supposed to be. I feel like this this is this is the biggest that this one has the biggest question mark. We didn't have as big of a question mark on Final Shape. We knew what the big bad was going to be, and it was all the questions revolved around what's the delivery? What is going to be the delivery? This though is completely different. This is leading to questions like, will we just keep expanding D2? Is Destiny 3 actually in development? Is it in fact payback? Bungie's working on something called Payback, and the speculation is, is that Payback... The most ironic name in history. ...is D3. This dies with the theory that at the end of year, this year, Destiny 2 will leave its current solar system and expand to New Horizons, albeit we still do not know what format that will take. New expansions with three episodes... I mean, it should technically happen, but at the same time, how the hell do you actually defeat the Witness for real? It's definitely, or something else. It just hasn't been confirmed yet. I appreciate the reassurance, though, and I'm probably going to wait until act. And also, uh, th this is not a story element that's bad. This is just a general thing that players are not going to accept. If we, if Destiny 2 ends with a win against the bad guys, you know, and the Gardener or whatever the fuck his name was, if the good side wins, your side, the player's side, what what excuse there's gonna be to not save the weapons, the skins, the everything you have acquired over the years from Destiny 2 to Destiny 3? There is not gonna be an excuse to do that. And Bungie obviously needs you to start a fresh slate. Okay? They, they want a fresh slate for everyone. And that's gonna that, that's the question. How are you gonna do that unless the witness is not victorious?
Act 2 before I declare episodes a fully good change from seasons. More to come. Yeah, I would say wait till then, Paul. And also, we need to see what Bungie's going to show us because they're supposed to be doing a live stream soon. They said they were going to do a live stream going over the episodes and, you know, we'll, or going over uh, Act 2. So we'll, we'll see what that actually brings to the table. Um, For my folks, you know, bringing up the fact that episodes are not that much different than seasons, you're right. But here's the other thing you don't want to hear. I'm okay with seasons. Matter of fact, I like seasons if we got more season of the witch and season of the wish you know everybody was like down with seasons but you you know you can go through there there's also been previous seasons even before that that were good seasons but in terms of activities go season of the witch fantastic season of the wish fantastic i was not against it everyone was everyone's like i hate the grid system i hate the process of upgrading and you know getting red borders and stuff i kind of liked it but i will say the <laughs> final two seasons and if well, it's all up to you. Do you like it or not? I don't like the story, but there's plenty of people who love Disney's story. I think it's cheap and lazy and poorly thought out in a lot of uh, situations. But there's a lot of people who like it. And if you like it, that's fine, honestly. Because it, it, it's... I mean, it's no acolyte, okay? It, it is acceptable. I just wish it was better. If you include things like Season of the Splicer and stuff like that, like, we have had good seasons before it's not like we haven't had it stop time gating let me ask you something for my folks complaining about time gating you have every weapon right now you got every red border you got every craftable weapon irrelevant you his point is irrelevant so what okay so you don't have everything in the game and that, that that's why things can be time gated what if i don't care about everything in the game and i just want to do the things that are supposed to happen again full, playing full completionist is not an is not a valid defense against time gating you got every ergo sum combination you have every exotic class item combo in the game motherfucker get to work then you guys act like you don't got shit to do get the fuck out of here let me look at your vaults show me your dim no 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 yeah, but again, it's what if I don't care about that? No, no, no. Show me your dim. I guarantee you do not have every fucking thing in the game. You are full of shit. I don't even have everything in the game. People saying you hate time gating. Brother, you got a ton of stuff to grind for right fucking now. But again, I agree with what you guys are saying. You don't like time gates. I don't necessarily like time gates either. Okay, but... You know, uh, let's see what Act 2 brings. Hopefully the cadence is improved. Now, the good part of, uh, of time gating is the reality is most people don't care. Most people don't care enough about time gating. Most people are not even close to being completionists or ignoring all the previous content. That time gating becomes honestly an issue. Yeah, it's it's annoying still. more. It's obviously way worse than it's good. But... It's not going to be the biggest problem for most people time gating. That is kind of the good part here. Maybe it's going to be a huge problem. I don't honestly know. I can't tell at this point. But chances are it's probably going to be completely ignorable and you're not going to honestly care about it. Over seasons. But I think let's just be real. Quality, you know, quality wise, I think people... But that is not to say that you should accept it even if it doesn't actually affect you. People want, they want the seasons to or the episodes to be like mini expansions. Let me pose you guys with this scenario and I'll leave it at this. Would you rather episodes be these mini expansions? Mm -hmm. Like truly mini expansions. And they are good. They're narr narratively tying up what the- I don't know what's his second offer gonna be, but uh, expansions, uh, seasons being mini expansions sounds great. They're supposed to be tying up. They're good standalone episodes and they're good experiences. Um, and they bring various loot but in that same vein the sacrifice is annual expansions so would you sacrifice big annual expansion big almost blockbuster yeah i would sacrifice annual expansions because if you're doing these mini expansions chances are it's actually the same as the big expansion only it's not in one drop but it's over time and i'm kind of okay with the overtime one more than just one big drop a lot of other games do it like that, and I think it's completely fine. Expansion. Now, you still get to the point where it's like, Aha! The storyline ends! The new ep season download DLC, whatever you want to call, is going to happen on X. But you, you, you get it. I don't think there's a big difference, and I personally like this, this smaller drip style of thing. 
just like final shape for higher quality seasons episodes that's I'm, I'm what i'm presenting to you guys is really the conversation that most likely has taken place at bungie if it's not currently taking place uh it's hard for me to tell if that was his point but um because i didn't honestly listen <laughs> I, I, I was thinking about uh season of discovery at this point but i don't know if this was his point but technically also the drip feed system also has a huge benefit of well, we introduce this, and people don't like it. People say that this part is shit. Well, you can fix that small part right now, and you can fix it or similar issues that, that, that you think might crop up for the next drip feed of the content. That is a huge advantage that a giant drop doesn't have. All right, guys, that's it. That's everything for this article. I've rambled long enough. I think... To, to me, I'm going to be waiting for the stream from Bungie. I'm going to see what they're going to show us. Okay, very well played. Uh, it's the cross. Anyway, this is because it says in. Bye-bye.